Ja, willkommen zurück, ihr Lieben, auf der R3S. Uh, welcome back to R3S stage. Um, the next talk deals with better justification for the better justification for the web. And why is this important? Because um, when you type text justification on a website into a search engine and you look at the top results, the general advice is to say, no, don't do it. This is quite hard to believe as the amount of websites is still growing every day on one hand. On the other hand, websites are also becoming more and more sophisticated and uh, contain more functions. Johannes, our speaker today, is a communication designer and his website, I checked it, is built with WordPress. However, unlike many other pages, his page doesn't look bad at all. So maybe because um, he simply went beyond typing text align and then hoped for the best. In his talk, he will shed some light from a designer's perspective why Justify Text in a web browser is way behind the quality of um, Justify Text in professional DTP software. And even if you're neither a designer nor a typography nerd, stay here because Johannes will have some valuable tips and tricks for you how to fix the issue with text justification. Johannes, thanks for joining, welcome, and the stage is yours. Thank you very much for the opportunity to talk at this unique event. My name is Johannes Amon. I'm a graphic designer and typography nerd from Germany. I'm living in the city of Mainz, where Johannes Gutenberg started a worldwide media revolution about 500 years ago. And in this talk, I'm going to explain how we can learn from him when dealing with justified text on the web. So let's start. So probably every one of you made this experience once in a while. You have uh, a couple of text columns and you want to align it on both sides so it looks nice and clean. And what do you do? You just type in text align justify and boom, it looks like shit. <laughs> you are presented with this kind of mess. There are huge white spaces inside of the columns and it looks not very professional. And um, it's not even just an aesthetic issue. Readability is also affected in a very bad way. So this is not good. Actually, justification on the web is so bad that professional designers will always advise you to not use it at all. So this is the current state in 2020 to not use it at all. And even though there would be many benefits of justified text, uh, I can imagine just, for example, modular layouts um, or better use of the given space in smartphone sizes, flexible designs, and it just looks nice to have a straight right margin. So um, I think it's a little bit sad that we cannot make use of all the uh, achievements of digital typesetting in the web. So there are several reasons for the bad justification quality on the web. First of all, there is no way of doing manual adjustments like custom line breaks or something like that. For example, in print design, you can uh, do this in the end after the typesetting on the web in a highly responsive environment. This just makes no sense. You could hard code something into the text block, but uh, it's, it probably makes no sense. So this is an important tool you don't have in um, typesetting on the web and uh, we have to find other solutions. Second reason is hyphenation. There was no proper hyphenation for a very long time on the web. It's just a few years since the browser support of Hyphen's Auto was not really good. And still, automatic hyphenation works just with a few privileged languages. So this was a really big issue for a long time. Third reason is browsers don't make use of advanced line breaking algorithms that are pretty common in professional desktop publishing software like 
uh, Adobe InDesign for decades now. So uh, again, print is way ahead in typographic quality. So I did a lot of research on the history of justification, both in print and digital design. There were several points in digital history where we had great concepts and working solutions for beautiful justification, but none of them eventually made it to the web. So I asked myself, why is that? How could we improve justification on the web? I want to present four different approaches. First, I will talk about the current state of hyphenation. Then I will explain the crucial topic of line breaking and why advanced algorithms are not implemented yet. Then I will pitch some ideas for something I call soft justification. And last but not least, uh, the fun stuff, how to improve justification via variable fonts and open type ligatures. So let's go back to our paragraph. The first thing you will do to improve the appearance of these text blocks is to add a line with hyphens auto. And you see, um, it will improve your text uh, significantly, but there are still a lot of white holes. And if you look closely, the uh, hyphenations are pretty uncommon. Since hyphenation is highly dependent on language rules uh, built into the browser, you need to set the language for the document first, or in this case for the element. So you need to go into your markup and you need to add the language tag and you see the hyphenation is changing again. So after adding proper hyphenation, we have a way better typeset, even though there is a lot of irregular white space inside the columns, so not satisfying. Well, hyphens auto was a huge step forward. Uh, nevertheless, I would like to have way more control over some details, such as the number of consecutive lines with uh, hyphens or uh, the ability to prevent the hyphenation of the last line in a paragraph. So luckily there is some news on the horizon. The working draft of CSS text module level four is mentioning four additional properties. The most exciting from my point of view is uh, hyphenate limit zone. It gives you the ability of defining a maximum amount of unfilled space that may be left before hyphenation even is triggered. So this will reduce the uh, number of hyphenations significantly um, in those cases where it's not really a benefit. So this is great stuff. I'm looking forward to this. Hyphenation is done, at least for now. Um, we made some good progress in the last years. Let's look into the other topics, which are maybe more relevant for now. To understand the benefits of advanced justification algorithms, we first have to understand the basics of line breaking. Here we have a text column and um, the algorithm starts by setting every single character next to each other, um, step by step, until the end of the line is reached and the word is not fitting anymore. Then it goes back until it reaches the nearest breakpoint, in this case a space character, deletes everything after this breakpoint and performs the line break itself. In the next line it continues the typesetting as above, character by character, line break and so on. Finally we have a left aligned text column and the space at the end of the lines is equally divided and filled in between the words. Now we have a justified text column. And that's it. This more or less represents your current line breaking algorithm in your browser in 2020. So not really advanced. To get a little bit more advanced, let's see what Donald Knuth and Michael Plas write in their famous paper breaking paragraphs into lines. 
so at the beginning of their paper they are pointing out that for computers it's no problem anymore to divide the space equally between the words but the more central problem is to find the right breakpoints to break a paragraph into lines and that's exactly what the algorithm is doing finding the optimal breakpoints of a given paragraph so what the algorithm is doing is to look at the whole paragraph and calculating all the different possibilities how to break the lines and finding the best solution so it considers if I break this word in the first line what consequences does it have for the next lines and do I have even bigger problems in the last line so in the end of this process there is one final best solution for this paragraph to break the lines and this is how it found its way into software like Adobe InDesign if you go to the justification settings and activate a paragraph composer in comparison to a single line composer um, the software will consider the whole paragraph and uh, deliver a better solution for your justification by 2020 none of the major browsers has implemented yet an advanced line breaking algorithm like the Knuth and Plus algorithm so why is that? First of all, they say it's performance. This algorithm can be much more expensive than the simple greedy algorithm. It's quadratic in paragraph length, so the problems occur with really long files and long paragraphs. I asked Bram Stein about this, who by the way did a great talk on this topic at Robothon conference in 2018. And he says the performance is not a really strong argument. The processing power got way better in the last 10 years and there are some pretty fast linear time implementations of the algorithm as well. He thinks it's more like unwillingness to change something so fundamental to a browser layout engine and it's really difficult for browser makers to make that change happen. So luckily there is also hope on the horizon when I was reading the CSS text module level 4, I found some property with the beautiful name text wrap pretty. And it specifies the user agent should bias for better layout over speed and is expected to consider multiple lines when making break decisions. This sounds really exciting. Advanced line breaking algorithms are not really here yet, but maybe there's a chance of having them in the future built into a browser. I would like to see it happen. The next topic is something I call soft justification. If you ask designers about the best justified text in history, they all refer to Johannes Gutenberg. But if you look closer into his Bible, you will see that the right margin is everything but straight. Instead, it's more like an optical margin and sometimes letters are hanging out. One of the findings of my research was that Gutenberg actually advised his workers to put more attention to the spaces in the lines than having a straight right margin. So the general appearance of the typeset of Johannes Gutenberg, that it looks so elegant, is more like an issue of spaces inside of the lines than having a really strict straight right margin. Our algorithms today have a very binary way of handling this. If the word is just one pixel longer than the line, the word will break. And there is no tolerance zone as in Gutenberg's Bible at this time. So in my opinion, the spaces between the words are way more important than a strict right edge. I would propose the implementation of a tolerance zone in the line breaking algorithm, kind of similar to the hyphenation zone um, I showed earlier. So this is kind of exciting. I would like to have more control over priorities in line breaking so that web designers could define if they prioritize a straight right margin or if they uh, want fewer hyphenations. And in general, I'm a fan of less binary, more human approaches of algorithms, so it doesn't always have to be one or zero. 
Soft justification is a term a friend of mine made up, so it's not really existing, but maybe some of my ideas will find eventually their way into some web standards for better typography. Who knows? The last topic I want to talk about is the fun part. How to improve justification on the web via variable fonts and open type ligatures. If we go back to Johannes Gutenberg and look closer to his Bible, we will see that he cheated a little bit. He didn't use only 26 different letters, but in fact had a total of 290 glyphs, a lot of combinations and variations uh, like ligatures or the same uh, letters without the serifs, um, which allowed him to squeeze some words into a line or to make them more wide inside of the line. So uh, he had the perfect tool for um, reaching the line length in the end. And this inspired some pioneers of digital typesetting in the early 90s to develop some solutions that could shrink and extend typefaces so it would fit better into the lines and make for better typeset in general. The technology of glyph scaling was pretty advanced at this point, so the software of Hermann Zapf actually adjusted the stem width of the letters so the gray value or type color was staying the same. But unfortunately this part of glyph scaling just somehow got lost Eventually Adobe bought the patents and implemented the technology into Adobe InDesign. I don't really know what happened to the code, but if you turn on glyph scaling in Adobe InDesign right now, your letters just get distorted, which is why nobody should ever be using it. But you guessed it, there is a solution on the horizon and it's called variable fonts or open type variations. This is an exciting new technology which combines several different styles of a typeface into one single file. Type designers can design the different masters and the browser can interpolate between those stages without any distortion. So this is really nice. I think it's available since 2016 and uh, people are using it. I think most modern browsers are supporting it by now. So this is a huge step forward. I'm not the first one with the idea of improving justified text on the web via variable fonts. In fact, Bram Stein got excellent results by combining his Knuth and Plus implementation with variable fonts. If you are interested in this very technical approach, I will link his talk in my resources. I am a type designer and so I wondered how could I use this technology in the best possible way. I created a variable font specialized for this use case. And first of all, I systematically analyzed all the letters for their ability to shrink and extend. And obviously there are huge differences. And I ended up with this little trick. The width axis of the variable font is kind of asynchronous. The letters grow and shrink only within their own capabilities. So you see, an I is not very flexible. But if we look at the narrow version of the W, you can see in the middle it has a little bit more air to prevent it from being too dark. At some point I am even changing the A to a completely different shape, so we have even more flexibility in width. Referring to Johannes Gutenberg, I also created some experimental ligatures. Your mileage may vary if this is a good idea, but I think at this point it's not about readability, it's just about aesthetics. Finally, I put all these components together and created a little live demo for better justification on the web. In this tool you can paste any text, choose the column width and font size, and experiment with my new added parameters. It will simulate the justification process since unfortunately we don't have the ability to hook into the real line breaking algorithm of the browser. Let me just show you the results. This is a typeset without any additional parameters 
and uh, now I add hyphenation variable fonts and my experimental open type ligatures and we'll see the improvement. Nice, isn't it? Digital typography will set the future trends of aesthetics in typesetting. With all the programs available today, there is no excuse anymore for mediocre typography. The funny part is, Hermann Zapf wrote this in a paper from 1993. So the technical possibilities are there for a very long time. We just have to use them for better typography on the web. Thank you very much for listening. It was a great honor for me to present at this stage. If you are interested in further information on this topic and all my resources, I put everything together for you on my website, so check it out. Thank you. Johannes, wow, thank you very much. I've been really standing here listening carefully. And it is indeed hard to believe that uh, it looks like technology is still so far behind. Anyway, um, I have a question for you. So the question is, is there a better open source font editor than FontForge? Yeah, uh, thank you. First of all, thank you for having me and thank you for the great introduction uh, you brought for me. Um, I'm very glad I can uh, present my talk here at this stage. Um, thank you uh, for the question. I saw it in the chat and um, I was thinking about it. I'm not aware of any good uh, um, open source alternative, but uh, I have to say um, the um, uh, commercial uh, font editing software like uh, Glyphs app and Robofont, they both have excellent communities uh, which um, are discussing in the board and uh, providing some plugins. And um, yeah, since it's such a small community, it's always good to support those, um, uh, those software creators. And um, I can recommend both of them. Um, and there is also uh, one uh, Adobe Illustrator plugin uh, for people who just want to get into um, type design and are used to using Illustrator and just want to convert it uh, to a font. And this one is called Font Self. So I, unfortunately, I have no good um, open source alternatives, um, but um, I can recommend a Robofont, Glyphs app and uh, the Illustrator plugin font self for beginners and starters. It's easy to use. Great stuff. So now I'm also curious, how long did it take you to uh, put your little, um, let's say, GUI or wizard together? The one you just showed at the end of your talk, where you just need to click, 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 and it does all the <laughs> hyphenation stuff, etc. And please don't tell me you did it in five so, minutes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't because I'm I'm not really um, a good coder uh, since I'm uh, a designer and uh, just got into code at this uh, time. And um, yeah, it's it's also made with really bad technology, so uh, it's written in jQuery at this time. And I, I tried to clean it up a little bit uh, for this presentation, but um, yeah, uh, you you will see it. It's it's not really good technology, but uh, I think um, there are great solutions out there. Check out the resources of Bram Stein. He did great stuff. And this one is just from a designer's perspective. Um, yeah, um, the, uh, uh, I, I wanted to try to show what's possible from a type design perspective. And yeah, it, it took me quite a while, so. <laughs> I can imagine, but thanks for investing the time. I think it, it'll, it'll help many, many people who at least sit down and try to design a nice, good looking website and overcome those uh, challenges. <laughs> Um, a second question just came in. What about LaTeX's algorithm trying to use similar space width on subsequent lines? Um, yeah, the, the, the um, algorithms of the tech line breaking system or the tech um, um, 
uh, uh, typeset system, they are really avant-garde in this field. So I told you about Hermann Zapf and all the stuff happening in the 90s and all this uh, stuff was um, yeah, mainly made for the tech uh, system. And I'm not really um, an expert in these uh, algorithms or these tech uh, system, but uh, I know they did a lot of great stuff in the 90s that somehow got lost. Um, and uh, yeah, the, they tried to limit the number of hyphenations in subsequent lines and they tried to um, yeah, uh, bring it even one step further in uh, preventing that one line is expanded and the next line is shrinked, so it will be really obvious. So they tried to uh, put this into the um, algorithm as well, and it uh, makes them even better justified text. And I also have to say my live demo is without a Knuth and Plus algorithm. So um, I, I was not able to, um, to combine it, and my demo is only with variable fonts, and if you would combine this with a Knuth and Plus uh, algorithm and some of these uh, stuff like subsequent lines and um, you, you can get uh, even better results. Well, it definitely sounds like um, this whole topic, so uh, better justification for the web is kind of a fantastic link between the coders, the nerds who really love the code, who love algorithms and more the opposite, people who are interested in design or even the marketing people, etc., etc. So, do you have any, uh, let's say, additional tips, tricks to share beyond the great stuff you've already uh, shown? I have no more additional questions for you for the moment from the audience. Um, yeah, uh, thank you so far. I, um, I really... Uh, enjoy being at this intersection between design and code um, because I also think there's a huge potential in just uh, making better typography um, with uh, all the technical abilities we have today. Um, yeah, uh, further tips, I think I, I put a list of great stuff, uh, people out there um, at, right at this intersection, uh, type and code, uh, Created and I made a list of resources uh, on my website. I linked it on the uh, last um, uh, slide of my slideshow. It's um, I think uh, I, I'm not sure if you can see it right now, but it's uh, on my website. Final type slash justification, and uh, you can check out all the other projects from the uh, coders and typographers out there. Uh, I think it's a really um, interesting topic right now. I do totally agree and um, I mean I don't know anybody who wouldn't love to really um, look at pretty websites. There are many out there but there are many ugly and um, compared to the overall amount only a, a few really really pretty websites out there. Anyway, um, famous last words from my side are simple. Um, thank you so much, Johannes, for joining us, for um, um, delivering this fantastic talk. Great topic. Um, technology works, stable stream, stable internet connection. Um, what else do we want and need? Thank you so much. And um, if, we would, if we will get um, further questions or, um, let's say, um, maybe some, some tweets uh, through our uh, communication channels, we will for sure share them with you and put, the, put you in touch with, uh, with the audience. Thank you so much. Have a great day and enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you very much.